Hello and welcome to Robotic Surgery Insights. I'm excited to be joined today by Jim Geiger, CEO of Flexdex Surgical, and today we're going to be discussing advancing laparoscopy with Axios technology. Thanks for joining me today, Jim. Thanks so much for having me, Joseph. And could you start by providing a brief overview to yourself and Flexdex? Sure. So yeah, I'm, I, by my background, I'm a pediatric surgeon. Uh, always been interested in uh, surgical technology, always been an earlier adopter on my clinical side. And because of that, I was uh, one of the first pediatric surgeons really in the world to use the Da Vinci robot. And I, I think I really quickly saw the benefits of, you know, wristed articulation and surgery and some of the other features of robotic surgery. Also saw that there were some barriers to using robotic surgery, especially for me in pediatric surgery, the size, the strength of the robot, some of those things early on, the setup and all that. So that sort of uh, inspiration led me to, uh, you know, to get into coming up with an alternative solution uh, to, you know, to the robot. Uh, and that really led to the development of Flexdex. Great. And when was Flexdex founded? Well, the, the idea or the initial uh, work started all the way back in 2007. Uh, the company was actually formed in, in 2014 uh, when we did our, our first uh, fundraise. And so, and then we commercialized our first uh, device in 2017. You know, we had to first overcome some really unique um, challenges of creating a purely mechanical handheld device that would give this natural input, so you know, very natural input of the surgeon's hand to the end effector and give that true wristed articulation. So uh, there was some some engineering hurdles to overcome, but um, to myself together with um, a really bright uh, engineer at University of Michigan, Shroy Abtar and others, I have really led to, uh, you know, to the development of that initial uh, technology, which now we've evolved even further with uh, the development of Axios. And how would you describe the mission and uh, vision of Flexdex and your technology? Yeah, so Joseph, the, the mission of Flexdex is to bring the benefits of minimally invasive surgery to more patients around the world. And really, minimally invasive surgery has had a big impact, um, you know, but it still could be, it still could grow significantly. And so what we've had since really the beginnings of of minimally based surgery or laparoscopy all the way back from the 1980s is, you know, what, what we nicknamed straight sticks because they are instruments that don't afford any significant dexterity or any dexterity. They, you can, you open and close the instrument. You have some degree of rotation, but you have no articulation for sure. And so it has, surgeons have certainly done amazing things with that, but it has certainly limited the growth of laparoscopy. And it's also, I think it's one of the factors that has led to the growth of robotic surgery. What we bring is with our Flexdex Axios uh, suite of instruments and right now with the needle driver is we bring natural wristed articulation to the surgeon in a, in a low cost package. And so now the surgeon can doesn't have to struggle as much to do some suturing and some suturing truthfully with straight sticks is impossible to do. You know, suturing up on, we call it suturing on the ceiling, like in the case of a ventral hernia repair or suturing up on a, to closing a large hiatal hernia. Uh, some of these, you know, you, you're, you're fixed with your angle that you come in with a straight stick. Once you add wristed articulation, now all of those angles are possible. The Axios has so many unique features to it, but we have obviously wristed articulation, but then we also have this twirl function. So. The surgeon is able to drive a needle through tissue following the exact natural curve of the needle. And that's, that's really unique. It's also, you get excellent bites of tissue because you're following the curve of the needle, no matter where you're putting that stitch, whether it's again, up on the ceiling and eventual hernia repair, whether it's in the hiatus, a uh, difficult location up against the diaphragm, whether it's doing a complex anastomosis, like for instance, uh, reconstructing a bile duct or pancreatic duct. So it's really, uh, you know, unique functionality. And then on top of that, you're keeping the surgeon's, 
you know, wrist in neutral position, the surgeon is using this really easy to do twirl function to drive the needle through as opposed to pronating, supinating, which can be fatiguing uh, to the surgeon over a long case and, and also keeping their shoulder and arm in neutral position. So it really is a, a unique uh, platform that will allow more surgeons to embark into minimally invasive surgery and to do more complex procedures um, in their minimally invasive surgery practice. And therefore, ultimately, patients, more patients will benefit from minimally invasive surgery. So I'm sure a lot has happened since you were founded in 2014. Could you talk to me a little bit about the journey that Flextex has been on? Yes, sure. So initially we created a device, um, the first Flextex needle driver. Uh, it, it was a really unique architecture where to have this unique input, the, the natural input. One of the things that's amazing about our instrument is you're indirectly connected you're, that with the handle you control you're indirectly connected to the end of the instrument and that allows that natural input. In the first iteration or our first generation product, the device mounted to the wrist and that gave it the stability and allowed that movement. But we did find that it created some limitations uh, to surgeons adopting it. Uh, but yet surgeons did amazing things with our first generation device. We did over 4,000 cases worldwide really complex operations, uh, you know, the reconstruction after the Whipple procedure, which is the removal of the, the head of the uh, pancreas and a very complex reconstruction of the bile duct, for example, or the pancreatic duct. So surgeons really did amazing things with that technology, um, but it was also a single use disposable device. So we, we had our price point and our business model was, was not ideal for where the market was heading. And in addition, we, um, you know, we had to change a little bit too much surgeon behavior with patient positioning, some other things with that first generation device. So we were fortunate to be able to take those learnings and to completely transform our technology into what's now Axios. And so we solved many of those issues. So we made the device reusable. So we now have reusable for 10 uses. Uh, we have, um, you know, lowered the frame profile. The surgeon does not have to change their positioning or port placement. If they do, it's only very slight uh, change that's required. And the learning curve and the functionality are, are also improved with this, with this device, despite the fact we got rid of the mounting to the wrist. So, and then we've, of course, by the, being it, the fact that it's reusable, we've completely changed the business model to now make it very cost-effective. So it's super exciting. Uh, and already surgeons are doing amazing things with, with the Axios needle driver. And we really look forward to bringing the additional instruments up of the Axios suite uh, forward in the future as well. Yeah, we've had really good engagement every time we've shared Axios content on the surgical robotics technology platform. Could you talk to me a little bit about the um, clinical experiences with Axios and the results achieved? Yeah, so we're we're early in the uh, commercialization. We did a um, we did a pilot launch, uh, if you will. We, we wanted to understand what it was like for the surgeons to adopt the new technology, and and that was very smooth. So, after you know an hour and a half, roughly, of preclinical um, sort of training, but in a in a very low fidelity open box trainer, uh, the surgeon is really ready to go, and then. We learned that, you know, the surgeon didn't have to make a lot of changes um, to adopt the technology and really out of the gate, many of the surgeons found immediate benefits. So with the wristed articulation, they found that the quality of their suturing was improving. Uh, they felt that they were, um, you know, able to sew or do the things that they wanted to do. And really amazingly for an early experience, the surgeons actually felt that it had, it was ergonomically better for them. And that a little bit surprised us because not that we didn't feel eventually we could show an ergonomic benefit because we've always seen that with our device, the surgeon's wrist is sort of in a neutral position, their shoulder um, and elbow are in not, you know, not up in the air, they're out down in a natural position. So we knew that eventually we would be able to prove that. But usually when someone's learning a new technology, they have a lot of tension in their muscles because it's new, uh, whether it's sitting at a robotic console, truthfully, or, or holding any instrument. So to hear, have that uh, surgeons relate that experience early on was, was really exciting for us too. Impressive. And when you think of, or how do you see the current minimally invasive surgery landscape 
And where do you see Axios fitting? Yeah, I think that's a great question, Joseph. I think, um, you know, there's a huge robotic wave right now, right? I mean, everybody, there's tons of, uh, you know, well, first you have Intuitive. I mean, they're amazing company, amazing technology. The, the new robot is, uh, I think, made some significant improvements, no doubt. But robotic surgery is, uh, it can't be everywhere in every OR, at least not in our current economics. And I'm not sure even long-term it can, it can be there. So if you really want more patients to benefit from minimally invasive surgery, then there's opportunities to sort of have a stratification of the market where in certain places, certain environments, and also access even to the robot, it's not gonna be in every OR. So a surgeon should have wristed articulation in all their cases. So if a surgeon does, you know, say they do two cases in the morning on the robot or something, and then they don't have the robot for the afternoon, but they have a case and they need, they, they could have the wristed articulation or they're going out to the ambulatory surgery center for their afternoon cases. Why not have that same benefit for their patients to be able to do this type of suturing? That's what we provide, but we keep the surgeon at the bedside, a low cost uh, package and, and very uh, easy to, you know, just flow right with your current laparoscopic um, instrumentation. So I think that we, you know, we really see that we can um, enhance, you know, we can well, we can help more patients to benefit from minimally invasive surgery. So we can help surgeons who maybe are reluctant to take on minimally invasive surgery in some markets. Uh, you know, you look in some markets, the penetration of minimally invasive surgery, say for a common procedure like hernia, is not very high, even in some Western uh, countries, but definitely in other areas. So if we can facilitate that, if a surgeon says, "Oh well, I can sew." you know, the peritoneal flap closed after a, a hernia repair, or I can suture my mesh up, or I can close a difficult hiatus, whatever it is, uh, close a long common enterotomy where they would be reluctant to sew it normally. That's, that's really exciting. And so we can help more patients benefit from invasive surgery or help surgeons convert to it. I believe that we can also help the current laparoscopic surgeon who, you know, there's some really talented laparoscopic surgeons, but uh, they have a hard time sometimes training others to do what they do. <laughs> so this will help help that and help them to, um, you know, when you use Axios, and I've had the pleasure to use it myself, it lowers, we, we call it the cognitive load of suturing. Like that, it sort of just makes it more fun. It's it's less stressful and it's easier to, to accomplish it, less fatigue and, and all of that. So I think that's really exciting. And, and then, you know, for the hybrid surgeon, kind of the surgeon that does robotic surgery, again, we, they can be having the benefits of wristed articulation for all their procedures. So, so that's really where we see it um, fall, falling in place. And there's plenty of opportunity to grow laparoscopy, to grow you know minimally invasive surgery and in other other ways, and also to enhance the current laparoscopic surgeons' uh, abilities. We're an open system with your regular laparoscopic equipment, so you can use your same stapler, you can use your same scope. If you want 3D, you can use 3D. If you want, you know green lights in surgery you can have green lights but we're you we work together with all of you know whatever you're using today in laparoscopic surgery and what that means is that we can be in any setting truthfully i mean we can be in more in markets that don't have the economics of some of our western markets like the us and europe for example but we can we can also be in those markets we can also be in ambulatory surgery centers where the cost model is different uh, and where a lot of robotic companies say or are trying to go, but we can be there with a very low cost, excellent alternative for surgeons. So yeah, it's really exciting to see what can, you know, what the technology can do. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to seeing more surgeons adopt it and, and uh, show, show, you know, what they can bring for their patients. Because ultimately, I think if we can get more patients to benefit from minimally invasive surgery in a, in a cost effective and economic way, that's what, that's what makes the most sense. And, and I think that's really what Axios uh, provides. So looking forward now, what are some of the next milestones that Flextech Surgical is working to achieve? Yeah, so the big one is um, we're, we're working on commercializing the needle driver right now in the United States. Uh, eventually we hope to do that more broadly, but we're, and we're doing it in a very, you know, sort of thoughtful, uh, a focused way, you know, trying to still have some early learnings as we before we go far and wide. And then we are, um, we're our R&D team, which is incredible. We have a, just an amazing engineering team. Uh, they're working on developing the suite of instruments. So we define the suite as sort of that basic toolbox that you need to do 
min or minimally invasive surgery. So, and it's, you're, you're familiar with it just because you've seen it with many other robotic companies. When they launch, they launch with these five or six sort of key instruments. So that's your Maryland dissector, your Metzenbaum scissors or dissecting scissors, a hook cautery, a fenestrated grasper, and then a needle driver. And the Axia suite of instruments will all be five millimeter and they will have monopolar uh, cautery associated with them. Those group of instruments I just listed are sort of your dissecting instruments. That's where you, you either free up the anatomy to like if in the case of a hernia to or expose the anatomy to do a closure. Or if you're doing like a tumor case, you're, you know, removing the tumor part and then you do your reconstruction later and et cetera. So it gives us that full range of instrumentation we need to really be a complete solution for the surgeon as opposed to just now we can offer the reconstructive part, which is definitely a key part and where wristed articulation brings its most benefit. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we finish? Well, I, first of all, I just thanks for the opportunity. And, and secondly, yeah, I just, that I think we're, we're super excited. This technology allows surgeons to do amazing things and just as amazing, truthfully, it, it gets at the tissue level or for that patient as robotic surgery. And we can be, we can be, uh, you know, we're agnostic to all these other amazing technologies. We can have those technologies, you know, integrated with our suite of instrumentation. So yeah, we think, uh, we think there's an opportunity and a need to have this, um, uh, you know, different, op um, different stratification, different opportunities for surgeons to use these technologies. So yeah, I think that's the main thing. We're just looking forward to uh, getting more engagement with surgeons and seeing how that they can impact uh, patients' lives in a positive way with our technology. Excellent. Well, I for one will be keeping a close eye out for Flextex in the coming months, as I'm sure our listeners will as well. Thanks very much for your time.